So we're taking a stab today at the first of possibly many album reviews that I want to do on this channel. And I'm sure it'll go great because since when has sharing an opinion on the internet ever gone wrong? But I am doing the first one on one of my favorite artists so I think I think the people will be pleased with what I have to say. So yeah, the first album up on this little review series is Hit Me Hard and Soft by Billie Eilish. I was up way past my bedtime last night listening to this album and by then I was like exhausted. I had just come home from a concert. Check out In This Moment, freaking awesome. <laughs> Also, Kim Dracula also killed it. So I was tired from that. <laughs> I was tired because it was like two in the morning. I really just wanted to appreciate it, what it was at like face value. Just like listen to it, don't think about it, just enjoy it. And so this morning I listened to it in full again and I wrote down some things and now I'm going to share the things with you. And if you don't agree with the things then Oh well, I don't know. <laughs> now, I want to talk about briefly the album as a whole and then I'll dive into track by track. And then at the end, I will give my top three, which will surely change <laughs> as I listen more to this album, but this is what we're thinking now. The album as a whole, I was very impressed with. I'm, just, I'm gonna say something drastic. I think Hit Me Hard and Soft has been my favorite album this year. And I know what you're saying, hey, uh, Clancy is next week. Yeah, I know, but I haven't listened to it in full yet, so it doesn't count. Hit Me Hard and Soft is currently my favorite album of the year. It felt very experimental, really as a vocalist, as a songwriter, just even instrumentally. It felt very bold, it felt very experimental, it felt like they were trying new things and they weren't afraid to go to different places within the same song. And I love that. You know what I mean? I love when songwriters are just bold with where they take you with their songs. I love a roller coaster. I'm not ever too impressed by the songs that sound just like consistently the same throughout the whole thing. I love the ones where you start it and then you skip to the end accidentally and it sounds like a whole different song. You're like, how did we even get here? And I feel like some of the songs on this album do that. I think it's a bold choice and I enjoy that. I like the bravery that it takes. Like, I'm here, I wanna get you here. And then sometimes even uh, a complete third option. It's experimental, it's bold, it's brave, bold and brash, I might even say. And it was very satisfying to see Billy kind of work through those different stages. Just kind of have fun with it, you know what I mean? This feels like a fun one. Just trying new things and seeing where we go with the songs, seeing where the songs takes you. It was a very fun journey to go on. I also enjoy the storytelling that this album has and kind of like the unity feeling that it brings. When I listened to this album for the first time at 2 a.m. when I was like exhausted, to me it felt like a story. Like all the love songs kind of feel like this, oh I'm falling in love and it's great. Then it's like, mm, maybe this person is not so great. And then it's like, well I'm over you and you suck. But then at the very end it's like, well I'm not over you, I just lied. To me it felt like a story. And the way the songs all flow together was also very satisfying to see unfold. Like the way that some songs would just flow into each other. There was plenty of songs that had little callbacks and lyrical references to other songs. And I don't know, it just gave it a sense of this is all the same story, this is all the same unit. Everything felt very connected. It also felt very thought out, you know what I mean? Like when a songwriter takes that step to try to connect everything. Like, okay, you put some thought into this and you put some love and care and you're really thinking about how this is packaged and how you want listeners to explore this. So yeah, I love those types of things, but that's just generally speaking. Now we get into the actual tracks. So the first track on this album is Skinny. I think this song had a big focus on her voice, which I absolutely love her voice. I think I said in the video that she is like my favorite singer. If we're talking about voice, Voices. Billy has one of the prettiest voices I've ever heard in my entire life. So a song that seems like it's dedicated to showcasing her vocal ability, I'm not mad at at all. Now the actual idea behind this song is very bold in my opinion. Being someone who is from the Billie Eilish like fan base, it does feel very personable. You know what I mean? Like Billie does seem genuine and sincere when she says that she cares about her fans and certainly her actions reflect that. But in Skinny, she's kind of calling out the negativity within her audience. You know, like this people think that I'm happier people think that I'm this and that and they have expectations of what I should look like and who I should be even though you didn't approve of me that's still me and I still love that version of me even if you didn't it's kind of going against 
these expectations where it's like, this is what you think I should be, but this is who I really am. But the old me is still me and maybe the real me and I think she's pretty. I think it was a bold move. Like, hey, what you guys had to say about me sucked, but I still love myself and I still love who that person was even though that's not me anymore. I know it's kind of hard to criticize the people who listen to your music and perceive you. As a celebrity, there's not really much you can do. Criticism is just like a part of the thing. I think so many celebrities don't want to speak against that sort of thing or like give it attention and I understand that perspective too but I really applaud someone who is willing to call out that sort of behavior and show like hey you can think what you want but I still love myself. The outro of this song is awesome. I loved it. I felt like I was in a movie. It was so cinematic. It was a nice little switch up for a song that focused so much on vocals, it seemed like. You had that really cool instrumental outro. I think it was a good balance between vocals and instrumental. And this song flows perfectly right into the second track, which is Lunch. Now this one is the earworm. <laughs> I saw people online complaining that this song was too simple. And my answer to that is you guys just hate fun. You hate fun. It's okay to like simple songs. All right, I'm just putting that out there. It's okay to just like simple, fun pop songs. It won't kill you, I promise. Not everything has to be a deep, soulful ballad about anxiety and depression, like you'll live. I think it's a great song to push to be on the radio. It has big like bad guy vibes where it's just kind of like fun and lighthearted and bouncy and it's got a little funky beat. Which by the way, I want to learn this song on the bass so hard. It's like bad guy because I think she wanted it to be a radio hit, but it's also like bad guy because the bass goes so hard. If there's anything about a Billie Eilish song, it's that it will have a funky bass line and I want to learn how to play it like immediately. Obviously, especially after the Barbie movie, Billie Eilish has proved herself time and time again that she is capable of being a deep philosophical songwriter. She has proven herself, even within this album, that she's got a voice, you know what I mean? She sounds beautiful, she can write lyrics that make you think and have an existential crisis. She's done that so many times. Because she's proven herself so many times, I think it's okay to have a song that isn't that. So I don't feel like it's necessary to like sit and whine that there's like, ooh, a fun pop song that doesn't make me think about my life. You guys will live. Just enjoy the song. It sounds great. I feel like I'm gonna say this next one wrong. Hold on. Okay, how do we say this? Chihiro. Gotcha. Chihiro. And if I'm saying that wrong, blame the internet. This one has big Stranger Things vibes. I first heard this song in the Fortnite trailer. I've been playing Fortnite <laughs> like my life depends on it. It's kind of sad. A lot of people have said that this album feels cinematic and that it belongs in a TV show and one was in Heartstopper so I definitely see that. People are even saying that they think this one will end up in Stranger Things. I don't know if I believe that but I certainly agree it would be in there and fit. Like you wouldn't think anything about it. It just seems like it would be in there. Now from my understanding, this song is about Spirited Away. I've never seen it, so I can't really get those references, but I have seen Stranger Things. And that little build up in there, if I feel like I'm in a Stranger Things trailer. I feel like I should just be like, <sighs> Like it makes me feel all dramatic and stuff and it's like in the 80s and everything's cool. Like maybe not cool because there's like a Demogorgon. I'm a simple person, you know what I mean? If a song has like a little funky synth in there that makes me think about my favorite show, Stranger Things, I'm gonna love it. One of my favorite artists wrote a song that makes me think about one of my favorite shows. So Chihiro's a win for me. Sorry, I do not understand the spirited away thing. <laughs> Birds of a feather. Now this is the one that was in Heartstopper. <laughs> Once again, I've never seen Heartstopper, but I did watch that clip <laughs> just to listen to Birds of a Feather. <laughs> this song has like the funkiest beat in my opinion. It's, it's one of those that like make you wanna move, you know what I mean? But it's also very cute and wholesome. I understand why Heartstopper wanted this song on their show. It's just got little cute, feel good vibes. I think it's a great mix of a song that has like instrumental appeal, but also vocal appeal. It's got that funky little beat, but also like the vocals in this song are magical. Billie Eilish, you never cease to impress me, girl. This is the type of song that makes you wanna romanticize life. This is the type of song that you'll listen to in your headphones and walk outside and you'll like hear the birds chirping in the background and you're like, I'm gonna be okay. Maybe life is magical. Maybe true love exists. 
It's like that kind of stuff. It's like a feel good like summer song. I don't know. She's cute. That's that's basically it. Next up we have Wildflower. This seems like another one that really showcases Billy's like vocals, her singing ability. That's the thing with Billy is like she's so talented just simply as a vocalist that she can do like these slower in your feeling type songs and it feel like enough. You know what I mean? It feels like more than enough. Her voice alone can move you. She's so talented that like just hearing her sing will bring enough to the table without a lot going on in the background. Which is so impressive. Let me just say that. I'm pretty sure Billy could just sing a cappella with nothing going on instrumentally and would still bring y'all to tears. That's just how talented she is as a vocalist. And I said what I said. I really enjoyed the outro on this one. The voice effects is just very eerie, I think. Next up, we have The Greatest. And in my opinion, this one was the kicker. The switch up at the end where she always refers to herself as the greatest and then she said, you could have been the greatest. Oh, it got me. I think this idea is is interesting. I think a lot of people, when they deal with heartbreak and being in difficult relationships, you kind of want to focus on that negativity and those bad feelings. I think it's an interesting concept to kind of dive away from wallowing in self-pity. And in this weird, obviously coping mechanism sort of way, be like, you know what? I'm not sad. I'm not pathetic. I'm actually the greatest. Kind of this false ego coming in and being like, well, this is actually a good thing. <laughs> I don't know. It just felt very unique to me. I don't think a lot of songs kind of take that route. And I want to talk about Billy's voice because I feel like, of course, her lyrics are great, but I feel like just her tone of voice alone helps to convey the message in songs like these. It's very uh, wistful. It's very like melancholy. Her voice alone just kind of adds this element of emotion to the song that really pushes the story forward. And I really like that. The highlight of the song to me was the build up where we finally have where the drums kick in. It kind of picks up a little bit. It's almost happier than ever vibes. It's kind of this build up and the song keeps building and we kind of reach this peak and then that's where the song starts and that's where everything comes in and the emotions are at its highest. I don't know, it just kind of gave me a happier than ever type feel. Lord, they got me speaking French up in here. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Are you happy to be in Paris? We oui. L'amour de la vie. <laughs> Listen, y'all, I took Spanish in school. I didn't take French. Sue me. I really want to talk about this song in like two halves because this song has such distinctive parts that I really have to talk about it first half, second half. First half, the vocals, I really enjoy. They're like jazzy, you know what I mean? I feel like she's kind of switching up her vocal style. And I love that. I love that she's exploring like different tones and different sounds with her voice. I think it shows growth that she's had as an artist. I think it also shows confidence to want to go to different places. I, I enjoyed it. Also, the voice effects used in this song. Normally, I don't like heavy sound effects on vocals. I just don't. But in this scenario, I enjoyed it. I felt like it was part of the storytelling. So I will look over my normal hatred for voice effects in this scenario. As I mentioned before, I love like roller coaster songs and this is definitely one of them. It really truly feels like two different songs and I love, I love when that happens. Next up, we have the diner again like birds of a feather this one's funky you know what i mean it's just funky it just sounds funky i saw people hating on this one <laughs> i'm not sure why i mean maybe it's because it's about a stalker but like it kind of sounds good though <laughs> like skinny i think it's brave to criticize and, and call this behavior out kind of feel guilty for enjoying a song about stalking so much i feel like it's an interesting headspace to take on, you know, to kind of take on the mind and the feelings and the perspective of someone who's literally stalking you and try to rationalize that and to take on that mentality, I feel like would be an interesting ride to take. Unfortunately, this kind of concept made a banger of a song. I don't know what that says about me. Maybe I'm the freak, maybe I'm the weirdo, I'm just a creep, but I enjoyed this song. <laughs> It's like one of my favorites, unfortunately. <laughs> now we have Bittersweet. There's like multiple sections in this album that give me like weekend vibes, but this one was giving me weekend vibes like at the very beginning of the song. I really like that this song is like broken into parts. I really like how it starts out with this echoey like far away sounding vocals. And then when it switches, it becomes clear and you can hear her better and those effects seem to be gone. I like that effect. 
I don't know, Billy and Phineas, you can write a catchy song. You two can certainly write a catchy song. And bro, I love you for it. This one sounds like a video game soundtrack. And not in a bad way, like in a good way. Like one of those video games that you play just because of the soundtrack. This one is a very good example of what I'm talking about, but I feel like this whole album throughout has like a, a, a bouncy feel to it. I like that. I like that sound a lot. Ending of the song, when True Blue kicked in, I heard that for the first time and I got so happy, I got so excited. I was like, I know what's next, I know what's coming. Which leads me to the final song on the track, Blue. Blue. Ah, oh, True Blue, my sweet baby. I have loved True Blue for so long and I never thought that she would see the light of day. And here we are, ladies and folks. I really enjoy that she applied her modern style to an old song. Like you can tell that she revisited it and wanted to change it and wanted to be like, I wanna modernize it, you know what I mean? I want it to sound like what I do now. I really do feel like she brought a new life to True Blue. I also enjoy like the places this song took me, bro. Like we were here, we were here, we were here, we were here, we were here. It was all over the place. I think songs like that keep an audience invested keeps an audience listening to you, keeps them paying attention because it's like, where is this song going to take me next? Like, where does this story start? Where are we going? How are we going to end? I enjoyed the roller coaster. I know I said that a couple times in this video, but Blue, I, I enjoyed the ride that it took me on. So yeah, that was kind of my thoughts on Hit Me Hard and Soft. Overall, I enjoyed it a lot. It'll definitely be one of my favorite albums of the year. I feel like Billy just knocked it out of the park. I think this album shows a very promising future for Billie. You know, kind of the boldness that she shows in her songwriting and her vocals, where she wants to go within these songs. She doesn't seem like the type of artist to stay stagnant, and I enjoy that. And I'm so pumped to see her on this tour, my god. My top three songs for this album. I'm gonna go with Birds of a Feather, The Diner, and blue. <laughs> will that change? I'm sure of it. Certainly it will. Right now, as it stands, those are my top three and I'm, I'm locking them in, chief. But yeah, feel free to share your thoughts below. What did you think of the album? What's your top songs? How are we feeling about this? If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe and as always, I will see you in the next one.